So, hello everyone and uh, welcome to our virtual Geneva Motor Show presentation. As most of you probably heard, um, the Geneva Motor Show has been cancelled due to the coronavirus. Um, this has been a huge shock for us and not only for us, for all the other exhibitors as well. But it is not the first time that uh, something like this uh, crossed our path. When we started the Microlino project, we wanted to show our first prototype in January 2016. Well, after being loaded and unloaded several times, it was finally dropped by a forklift truck at the airport of Zurich and looked like this. So before even showing our very first Microlino prototype, it was already damaged. What did we do in that case? Well, we just exhibited it anyways and put a sticker on it that said, shit happens. Also this year, we are trying to make the best out of the situation and are live streaming this event for our more than 100,000 social media fans. Many thanks to everyone taking the time to watch at home. We want to start with our vision. In 1999, we invented the first kick scooter designed to solve the last mile problem. At that time, nobody really knew what micromobility is, but people loved it anyways. We sold 80,000 kick scooters at the, per day at that time and are still selling over 1.5 million scooters every year. The emergence of electric drivetrains has made micromobility even more attractive. Electric mobility cannot just solve the last mile problem, it can completely change the way we move in cities. It turns out that 90% of the trips are below 30 kilometers. They are the ideal micromobility distance. But we also think there is no one-size-fits-all solution. This is why we are the first company to focus on three main categories in micromobility. E-scooters and e-bikes for shorter distances, electric motorbikes for medium distances, and pod cars for weather-protected mobility. Today, we are going to announce new products in every single category. Let's start with the e-scooters. The first innovation that we would like to show you today is the micro-commuter, this little fellow here. We designed the scooter with one thing in mind, the combination with other modes of transport. You take the metro to work, but the station is two kilometers away from your office, then the commuter is the right fit for you. So what makes it so ideal to be combined with other modes of transport? Well, for one, it is size. The commuter is only half the size of a normal e-scooter and on top weighs 30% less, which makes it really easy to carry it around. What makes a commuter so special except being uh, compact and light? Well, it's the first e-scooter that gets its energy from a power bank. You can see right here. You can simply click it away and uh, take it at home and uh, uh, charge it on a normal uh, socket. Or what you can also do is uh, just plug in your phone and uh, charge your smartphone on the, on the train. This e-scooter has a maximum speed of 20 kilometers and a range of 10 kilometers with one battery. If you want more range, you can simply pack a second battery or a third battery and multiply the range like that. This is the first time that this has been done on an e-scooter, uh, I mean with the, with the power bank, and we are very proud to have finally put it into the market. The micro-commuter will be available in summer of this year. The second e-scooter that we are showing today is the all-new Micro Explorer. We have taken our more than seven years of experience in e-scooters to make the Explorer. It is designed not only to have great performance, but also to last thousands of kilometers. This is not a gadget. This is a real vehicle. The Explorer takes performance and riding comfort to a whole new level. Most people are used to sharing scooters. They are bulky and heavy. And often, they do not even have suspension. With the Explorer, you not only have suspension, but you have it on both wheels. It is in many ways the ideal combination between comfort, power, and portability. 
It has an integrated display that shows speed and features. And it also has the intuitive twist throttle, a uh, feature that micro customers have loved. By turning it forward, it activates the electric regeneration brake and recharges the battery. The scooter has a motor with up to 500 watt of peak power that will get you to 25 kilometers an hour in under three seconds. By the way, the Explorer will soon come to market in a special Mercedes version designed to complement their range of electric vehicles as well. It will hit stores this spring and will cost around 1,000 euros. Now let's go on to the second category of micromobility, motorcycles. Did you know that motorcycles built before 2011 can be up to 800 times as polluting as a normal car? That's because they do not need to comply with the same emission standards as cars and vans. And there are still millions of old motorcycles still in use. So why are there not more electric motorcycles sold for urban areas? Because of range anxiety? Most urban motorcycles that are designed for the city are not driving very far, so range is not an issue. One of the main reasons, at least in Europe, is regulation. Gasoline 50cc motorcycles can be driven with a car driver's license even when they are going faster than 45 kilometers an hour. Electric motorcycles, in contrast, are limited to 45 kilometers per hour in order to be driven with a car driver's license. Does that make sense? Absolutely not. But it is the reality of Europe's regulation at the moment. How do we solve that? Well, let us introduce to you the Microletta, essentially the sister of the Microlino. With the Microletta, we wanted to create an electric three-wheeled scooter that feels and behaves like a two-wheeler, but has all the great benefits of a three-wheeler. Speaking of benefits, because of the three wheels, there is no speed limitation at 45 kilometers. And you can drive the Microletta with a car driver's license and speed up to 80 kilometers an hour. This makes it easier for people to switch from a gasoline scooter to an electric motorcycle without being limited in speed or need, needing to take an additional test. Another bonus that comes with having three wheels is safety. Have you ever drove a motorcycle on wet or slippery roads before? Feels unpleasant, right? Now imagine having two wheels in the front that allow you much more grip and a shorter braking distance. Now that sounds comforting and safe, but that's not all. The tilting system of the front wheels can be locked at low speeds or when doing a full stop. This keeps the scooter stable without having to put your feet down. Trust me, your shoes will thank you for that. While three wheelers are not exactly new on the market, most of them are lacking three things at the moment. They are not electric, too big and heavy, and their mostly aggressive design reminds me of a tank on three wheels. Not exactly the type of vehicle you would use to pick up your date with. The Microletta, in comparison, has a fresh and clean design with a retro charm, just like the Microlino. It will make you, your date, and all the people around you smile. So let's have a quick look at it. The front is immediately recognizable with its front shield and the two wheels coming out of each side. On top we have the big uh, LED headlight with the integrated handlebars over here and a beautiful display at the back. Now let's have a look at the seat. It's a very comfortable round eco leather seat bench that fits two people. But underneath is where the action starts. So there are two swappable batteries integrated in the trunk of the Microletta that offer a range of 100 kilometers and can easily be charged at home in just four hours. Oh, and no, by the way, the batteries are not from Gogorio, if uh, people are asking. Next to the batteries, there is also space for a helmet 
or other belongings in the trunk. At the rear, over here, um, we have the integrated uh, braking light and blinkers and the hop motor in the, in the wheel that powers the scooter uh, up to 80 kilometers an hour. With a total weight of 120 kilograms, it is only slightly heavier than your average two-wheeler. And then back to the side, where we have the platform with the mandatory foot brake. Don't worry, if you prefer a normal hand brake, there is also a braking lever uh, on, the, on the handlebar over here. Now, last but not least, let's have a look at the screen over here. Uh, it's a color display that can show you various things from your speed, navigation, battery status and range, up to acceleration and recuperation details. You're also able to connect it with your phone in order to check your messages when stopping at a red light. So many of you have asked when it will go into production. At the moment, we don't have a specific date as the microletta is still a concept. The good news is, though, we are about to start the engineering phase for mass production because we were so overwhelmed by, our, by your interest in this new product. In the first four days after showing the microletta, we gathered more than 500 reservations, which is just incredible. So thanks for that. So finally, we would like to unveil what tens of thousands of people around the world have been waiting for, the new Microlino 2.0. But why did we make a new version of the Microlino without selling the first one? Well, there are two main reasons. Firstly, we have shown our initial design already in 2015. We wanted the Microlino to look modern even in 2025, so a design change was needed. But how could we redesign the whole vehicle without disappointing our more than 17,000 reservation holder and tens of thousands of fans? Simple, we let them vote and design the Microlino 2.0 together with us. More than 7,000 people have voted and gave their inputs and ideas on the new design, which helped us a lot. So thanks again, everyone, for your inputs. Secondly, we were not yet satisfied with the technical aspects of the car. Too many things simply did not meet our expectations in terms of quality, safety and driving behavior. We wanted the Microlino to be an alternative to a car and for that it needs to have the same comfort as a normal car. To achieve that, we appointed Peter Müller as our new CTO. Peter has more than 30 years of experience in the automotive industry and has been an executive at Porsche, BMW and Cherry. We have profited a lot from his experience and therefore I would like to let him explain a little bit more about the technical changes we are planning, planning at the moment. So Peter, uh, enter the stage and uh, tell us all about technical changes. Thanks. Thank you, Oliver and Merlin. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I joined last week Microlino and was inspired by this cute L7e vehicle. And to achieve all the targets regarding quality, safety and driving behavior, it becomes clear that we have to redesign the vehicle. And from week to week the list get, is getting longer and at the end we decided to redesign the whole vehicle. So I can uh, promise you under the shell, the whole vehicle, really the whole vehicle has a new design. And um, the list is very long of the changes we have done and it's too long to mention everything today. So we want to focus on the main features of the vehicle. First, the chassis is now uh, will be done in uh, pressed steel parts to improve the stiffness and the safety and is not anymore in a tubular, uh, with a tubular frame. The second uh, part, the body, we have now body parts in aluminium and steel are not anymore in plastic. Only the bumpers in the front and the rear will be plastic parts. This we decided to improve the quality of the vehicle. Then if we come to the suspension for the driving behavior, we have now not only independent suspension in the front, we have it also in the rear. And to achieve this, we have to increase the track, the rear track of the vehicle and uh, to achieve this the rear track is now 50% uh, we enlarged the rear track by 
And also the e-motor motor is not anymore on the rear axle, it's now on the chassis. And this improves uh, the unsprung masses, we reduce the unsprung masses and with a, a reduction of the unsprung masses we also have now a much higher uh, driving uh, comfort of this vehicle. I mentioned the e-motor, also the e-motor is new. We have now a synchronous uh, motor with permanent magnets with 15% uh, uh, higher efficiency in, uh, instead the old asynchronous motor we had. And the uh, efficiency of the motor means we have a higher range or we can have a higher range for this vehicle or we can reduce the battery pack. And also the battery, the chemistry of the cells is new. We changed from LFP to NMC and this uh, chemistry has more power density and that means we have with the same battery uh, less volume and less weight and this uh, is a benefit now that we have now the battery pack under the floor and not in the cabin anymore. I could now mention many more details but I think for today it's long. The list of changes is really long and I would now uh, suggest you want to see how this vehicle looks like and Oliver I want to hand over to you that you unveil the vehicle. Thank you. So are you ready to see the result? We are very excited and proud to show it to you for the first time live. Here it is, the new Microlino. As you can see, the design is completely revised. I would like to quote one of our Facebook fans. The duck has turned into a swan, and I could not agree more with this statement. We wanted the Microlino to be more elegant, more modern, but still charming. So let's start from the front. As you can see, we did smoothen the lines and make the vehicle rounder and more harmonic. One of the very nice features is our new LED bar on the front door. Compared to the previous version, we now nicely integrated the blinkers into the door. But that's not all. With the LED bar, you will have a unique look when riding in the dark. Kind of like a smiley face. Another way how we smoothened the appearance from the front is we put the charging port to the back and we'll position the door handle on the side. So let's look at the side. In terms of overall dimensions, not much has changed. It is still short enough to be able to cross park with only 2.43 meters of length. What you might not notice from the outside, but you will notice on the inside, is that the vehicle got a little taller and the side windows as well. This will give you more headroom and a better visibility. To further improve that visibility, we also changed something that many customers have told us to. We narrowed the A-pillar. For a city car, visibility is one of the most important things because keeping pedestrians and cyclists safe outside is just as important as the people inside. You can also see that we have new and more modern looking rims. This is something that at this point is our first proposal, but like with the general design, we will give our community the chance to select their favorite rim designs. Okay, and now we are going towards the rear of the car. For many of our customers, the rear of the Microlino was never their favorite part. Well, now I think we can say that finally the Microlino has a nice rear as well. Apart from the request by our community, also our technical changes uh, there required the design to be revised. We made the rear track about 50% wider than before to gain more stability and riding comfort. The rear light is an LED stripe with integrated blinkers that takes up the design language from the front again. It's really smooth and clean. And now I'm very excited to show you the new interior for the very first time. So 
We won't have the automatic opening in the series, unfortunately, but as Peter already said, we will have a soft close function that automatically closes the door. So the first thing you notice is the new steering column. Um, it is now fixed and not connected to the door anymore, which enables the door to open much further than ever before and make it easier to enter. To get in and out easily, you can simply fold the steering column forward. Compared to before, it only has one folding spot, so that steering is more accurate and needs less effort. Plus, you can finally use it as a support when getting out of the car. The second thing you notice is the new seat design. Like the exterior of the Microlino, this was also voted for by our online community. We have designed the seat to be more comfortable and also more ergonomic than before. The whole car has ambient lighting inside to make you feel at home even when you are riding through the city in the dark. Okay, so let's look at the dashboard. One of the main things you realize when you sit inside is that it feels much more spacious. This is largely because we took out most of the components that used to be inside the door and only left the rigid frame and the bottom panels. We reduced the weight of the door by about half, which makes it much easier to open and close. And as you can see, we have a very nice digital display that shows all the uh, information right in front of the driver, so also much more ergonomic than before. Apart from that, we kept the dashboard very clean to make it perfect for you to customize yourself. The aluminum bar enables you to click in whatever accessories you like, whether it is a holder for your Bluetooth speakers or your own smartphone. So before we end this presentation, we would like to thank all the people that have been involved in all these projects that we just showed you. Apart for our, from our great team in-house, um, uh, we also had help from our new partner Checkomp for building up these show vehicles and also from Icona for the great work they have done on the design of the Microlino. Any great project needs a lot of teamwork and this was no exception. Thank you. Also, we want to thank all of you who have been supporting us through the ups and downs over the years. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and thanks for watching.